today's video, I'm going to be showing you a four-dimensional rocket ship that flies around the nail. And there are all kinds of planets in here. There's a beautiful galaxy color background. And then on a spring, there is a little astronaut that is floating kind of separate from the rocket ship. And if you like bounce on him, he wiggles back and forth. It is so cute. I love this one. I hope you guys love it too. There's one extra special thing with this. It also glows in the dark, so the little flames coming on the rocket as well as the planets will glow, which I think is just the next thing that puts the whole design over the top if it weren't that way already. So don't forget to click subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. So we're going to begin with an overlay that's going to be a galaxy. And there are so many different ways to do a galaxy that you can have so much fun doing this and kind of changing it up and doing your own thing. One thing I'm going to do, which I have never done before, is I'm going to add a streak of a glitter mix, which is a really pretty glitter. It's got some bigger chunks of silver in it. And then I'm going to sort of fade some bluish blackish marbling over the top of it so that that glitter sort of shines through. It looks so nice. And I actually want to do that just on my nails is to have that little like glitter veining coming through. It is so pretty. I'm going to mix in some purple again overlapping the glitter mix just a little bit it doesn't hurt to add a little bit of that in there add some brighter colors you, I either seem to see where you add in like a teal or a pink or you can add in both however however it works for you whatever floats your boat I'm going to add a couple little um metal foil flakes that are silver here and there throughout the design just to add another little element of glitz and glamour to it almost looks like flying bits of of metal through the through the Milky Way. And then we're going to be encapsulating this nail with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure it is nice and strong. Like I said before, however you wanna do a galaxy, go for it. One of my favorite things to do if you weren't going to use those little bits of um, silver foil would be to add in some star glitters. But again, have fun with it. There's so many different galaxy stylings out there. If you've never done one before, look up different things. If you just look up galaxy nails, you'll see so many different styles and options out there that you can kind of pick what you like the best and what's your favorite thing and go from there, especially when it comes to say color choices, because there's a lot of different options. So now in a nail form backing, we're going to start sculpting all of our different pieces. I'm going to make the rocket first, just because even though it's one of the smaller pieces to this, it's probably the most important. So we're going to take gray acrylic and just sculpt a basic rocket shape. It's got a point on one end, sloping sides, and then a flat bottom on it. When you're sculpting things on a nail form backing, I know for me personally, they tend to get thinner than I imagined that they will. So for the rocket especially, make sure that it's thick enough that it isn't going to be too delicate and too fragile that once you start playing with it later on, it's going to be a break risk. So just keep a keep an open mind about making sure it's on the thicker side. You're going to sculpt the little tail pieces or the little, um, I don't know, bottom fin things. You're gonna make one on each side of the rocket on the left and the right, and then make a third one that's to the side that is going to go down the middle. Try to sculpt it the same size and shape as the ones that are attached to the rocket, knowing that you're going to have to glue it on later. Also, this part you could have done directly on the rocket or you can do it to the side like I am. We're going to make the flames that are coming out of the back or the bottom of the rocket. So I've got a sparkly yellow acrylic I'm going to make the basic flame shape out of. It's actually very similar to the shape of the rocket. And then I'm going to take some orange and I'm going to add some orange around it. This orange that I'm using is a glow in the dark color. So it's going to add that glowing element to it. So I'm going to add just a layer of that around the outside of it, keeping in that sort of rocket or flame shaped um, you know, outline to it. And then I'm just going to kind of wash over the whole thing with a little bit more of that glow in the dark over the middle. I'm actually going to use a clear glow in the dark versus the orange one. But to be perfectly honest, it all ends up looking just kind of the same color. Once that glow goes over the top of it, it doesn't change much, but whatever works. Then we're going to take, and we're going to glue those pieces we just made onto our rocket. So we're going to glue on that fin piece with a little bit of nail glue. When you're gluing it on, you'll see that one side is really flat and one side has a little bit of a rounded shape to it. Glue it so that the flat side is down the middle of the rocket and the rounded side goes to the side. That way when you go through and you add a little bit more acrylic to the flat side to round it off, it ends up actually making it in the middle. If you glue it as it is right in the center of the nail, when you add more acrylic to the side that's flat, it's going to end up looking thick on the one side or off center. So you have to actually make it a little bit off center to start with so that it is centered later on. Use a little bit more red acrylic to secure everything together as far as the fin goes, and then add some more of the glow in the dark acrylic to the flames. Now flip that rocket over and we're going to glue two beads to the back of it. Try to keep them as straight in line with each other as you possibly can and just glue them in place with some nail glue. After they have been glued in place, that's a very temporary hold. Take some clear acrylic and just secure them. Make sure when you're securing them and gluing them in place, you do not fill in the hole. You want the whole of the bead to remain open and clear for the wire to pass through. Now we're going to start sculpting our different planets. So when you're going to go through and start sculpting your planets, we're actually going to start with Mars, which is the smallest one. I'm going to use a mix of colors that are red, 
reds and orange tones as well as glow in the dark. Like I said in the beginning of this video, the planets and the flames coming out of the back of the rocket are going to glow. So when you're grabbing your colors and you're picking out colors for this, make sure you use some glow in the dark. So for my little Mars, I'm going to actually be capping it with a whole layer of that glow in the dark orange tone color that I showed you for the, for the rocket, just to make sure that the whole thing has that nice healthy glow to it. And now for our Jupiter, I'm going to be grabbing some orange tones, some tan tones, and as well as our glow in the darks, I'm just going to be making our bigger planet. So we've got the small little Mars, and then we're going to be making our bigger Jupiter. And then as you're making this one, I'm going to start off by making just a circle shape because it is going to be so much bigger. Having that base of a circle to start with and then adding layers to it vertically is kind of a helpful hint. Helpful hint. Now we're going to be doing our other layers. Try to make it look like the layers are almost striped horizontally. You don't have to make them perfectly striped. In fact, just kind of vaguely striped is perfect. I didn't be, I wasn't too specific about what colors were where. I just grabbed multicolored beads and filled it in. You're focusing on a couple different things, making sure you're adding in glow in the dark colors, as well as adding those stripes in and keeping the shape nice and domed and around it. There's a lot of go lot going on. So whenever you just grab another bead of acrylic to use, make sure you double dip it. If you've never double dipped a bead of acrylic, the process is simple. You basically dip your brush into the monomer, tap it off however much you normally would, and then when you go to dip in your powder, start with the lighter of the two colors you're planning to double dip, dip it in the lighter color half. So if you normally dip for three seconds or you know whatever your time frame is, dip it half, half the time and then move to your darker color. Do the lighter color first, otherwise if you do the darker color first, the pigments from the darker color will bleed into the lighter color and you'll end up with the same color. You won't have that two distinct color thing that's really cool with a double dipped bead. So after you do that, go into your lighter color for again, half the amount of time that you normally would so that the two times equal a regular um, polymer pickup. And then you have that double dipped bead. You can do triple di dips, quadruple dips, however much you just have to make sure that by the end of it, your powder to monomer ratio is correct. So now for our Saturn, as you can see, we have our little Mars and our Jupiter. We're going to do our Saturn. I first sculpted a domed shape with just a, a tan color acrylic, and then I'm going to add some brown and some clear and a little bit of a swirly glow in the dark. And I'm going to be adding a layer over the top of it to add the color to it. I found that was easier for Saturn just because the color changes were a little less drastic, but for uh, for Jupiter, where the color changes are a lot more varied with the darker red and the lighter tans. I think the way I did it was probably the best route for that. It's up to you. Whatever works for you is great. I'm actually going to put a full layer of glow in the dark over my planets. Like I said, I really want them to glow. Keep in mind though that your glow in the dark, especially if you have just a clear one, well, that's a great option. It will foggy up your color your color streaks a little bit because it does have a pigment in it. It's a clear pigment, but it does make things look a little less crystal clear. So now we're going to make our ring for our Saturn. So sculpt a oval shape, thicker on the ends, thinner on, uh, thicker on the short ends, thinner on the long ends, just with the clear glow acrylic at first. And then I'm going to be adding just a few streaks of some darker shades along the edges of that of that ring. So when you go through and we're going to be adding these again, no perfection needed, just kind of swipe them on, use acrylic that's more wet than normal. So going back to that liquid and powder ratio for this particular circumstance, you're going to dip your brush normally and then dip into a single color half time. So like one and a half seconds or just a tap even is going to get you a consistency of acrylic where you can spread it out and get these lines easier than if it was a regular sculpting consistency. That's the biggest thing with acrylic that I always come back to when I'm trying to, you know, give instructions for different things is there's a, a method to the madness for how much time you spend in your monomer and how much time you spend in your polymer and figuring that out. Once you figure that out, the sky's the limit and you can do so many more things than you ever thought you could with your acrylic. To finish up that Saturn at this point, we're just going to attach the ring to the outside with a little bit of clear acrylic on the back. And now we get to start sculpting our little astronaut. So when you're looking at this, the proportions of the astronaut to the rocket, to the planets, the astronaut is humongous. The reason for that is I wanted him to look like he was closer to us and all of this was sort of happening in the background. Another way to make that happen, like you saw, or like I said, I guess you didn't really see it, but I used that little spring behind him, which gave him that little bit of movement where he could jiggle back and forth, which by the way is a lot more fun to deal with or to play with than it looks like in the video because that you couldn't really get it. I couldn't get it to wiggle as much as I could on the video. Um, but you can really get it to kind of jiggle back and forth. Plus different springs are a little better than other ones. But anyways, I wanted him to look like he was in the foreground floating in front of everything. So he's on that really tall spring, which puts him in front of everything else on the nail. And then the size also is going to help you with that. So a bigger thing 
you know, a, proportionally a bigger astronaut compared to the rocket to the planets is going to make him look closer to you, even if they were all on the exact same level. So if you want something to look like it's farther away, you make it smaller. If you want something to look like it's really close up, you make it bigger. And once we have our little astronaut sculpted, I'm doing all of his stuff just with white and I'm going to be adding the little details to him later with acrylic paint. But once he's done, all of your acrylic pieces are ready and you get to start assembling it, which really is the fun part. So we're just going to do a little bit more on our astronaut. He's gonna need some hands and some feet and his pack on his back. But when you go to start assembling it, um, I'm going to show you how to assemble it, but I just want to talk for a minute about kind of the mental state of a going through to assemble something like this. You have all these pieces you made, and as long as you aren't assembling them as you go, if you, you know, make them all and then save them for the assembly, you have this great opportunity to lay them out and plan how you're going to assemble it with the pieces that you see. So if you weren't concerned about placing your planets in the correct order, as far as they would be in the solar system, if you're just like, you know, I'm just going to place these where they look right, which up to you completely however you want to do it. I did place mine in in the correct order as far as they go. Um, but otherwise, if you didn't want to do that, if you wanted to just be random about it and be more worried about aesthetics, you might want to look at splitting up Jupiter from Mars because they both have some of those orangey reds in them. And you might want to make sure, you know, just that things were spaced correctly and that the biggest planet maybe is in a certain spot. Maybe the planets go from biggest to small. So you can kind of have this opportunity to set things out, see how they look and play around with it that way. To start assembling, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a piece of wire in the upper corner by the cuticle, wrap that piece of wire around the nail. So to attach it, I created a little groove into the nail acrylic, into the clear acrylic layer with my e-file, placed that wire in, glued it down, and then capped it with clear acrylic. And now I'm going to just string it around in a little corkscrew going around the nail and I'm going to attach it to the underside of the nail. Before I do that, I do want to place my rocket onto the wire. If it doesn't you know, fly around it perfectly right now. There might be a little bit of uh, different kinds of kinks in your wire. That's fine. You can straighten those out later. The wire I'm using is a jewelry wire that is a very, very fine gauge. That's what you need. You don't want a wire that is too heavy because you won't be able to manipulate it very easily. And it'll be harder for your rocket to fly on it because it'll be thicker. So once you have your wire in place, then you can take some clear acrylic and you're going to make these little nodules that are going to act as a platform for your planets. I'm going to attach my Mars onto the first little nodule and then I'm going to wait a second for just to make sure holding it in place so that it doesn't slide around. I'm going to grab Jupiter, who is very slippery by the way, and we're going to attach Jupiter. And then last but not least, we're going to attach Saturn. I'm going to make another one of those little platforms, little clear platforms, kind of at a couple beads. I wanted Saturn to be up a little bit further just so that I um, didn't have the rings to kind of dig into my nail. I wanted to make sure, or my sidewall, I wanted to make sure that it stood up high enough that I wasn't going to get, it just wasn't going to be in the way. So we're going to build that one up just a little bit further. And then after that platform is nice and tall, as you can see, multiple layers there. We're going to grab Saturn and stick it down. Again, slippery, slippery Saturn. Hold it in place, especially with the bigger ones. You really have to hold them for a little while because the acrylic, if it's not fully set, it does not have the strength to keep that one in place. Secure them with more clear acrylic underneath. I would recommend doing that for all your planets, whether or not they seemed stuck or not, just to make sure that they aren't going anywhere. And then we're going to just make sure we know where we're going to place our little astronaut and then attach our spring. If you're wondering where I got this particular spring, I had to murder a ballpoint pen, a pen that clicks. So if you have any pens that click and you and they don't write anymore, any of a clicky pen, I mean, it doesn't write anymore, the ink is gone, you're gonna throw it away. Don't throw it away without taking the spring out. Always take the springs out. And I ran out of springs and I actually, I personally don't prefer to use a clicky pen. I like the cheap ballpoint pens that are just like the Bic classic ones. I don't know why I don't like gel pens either. I'm kind of a weirdo as far as that's concerned. So I don't usually run through clicky pens. So I had to kill one in order to get the spring out of it, which is just one of those unfortunate facts of life. But it was worth it, right? We got a beautiful design here. And actually I kept the little ink cartridge out of it, but either way, enough lollygagging about our spring problem. We're going to be attaching the spring with clear acrylic to the nail, and then we're going to be attaching the other end of our spring to our little astronaut's body. You don't have to attach him so that he's right side up. If I would actually attach him so he's either like upside down or laying on his side, like I did, he's kind of floating horizontally. It would have been funny for him to be upside down if you ask me, but however it works for you. 
And then we're going to be just kind of moving everything out of the way, making sure it all sits well, kind of looking around, making sure everything is secured. Before you move on to the next step, I would touch everything. I would move your rocket around to make sure that it's, you know, it flies properly. I would touch your astronaut to make sure he wiggles. I would make sure all the planets are secure. I would tap them and wiggle them and just make sure nothing is loose. Now that you've done all that uh, groping of your nail art, you can go ahead and you can start adding the details to all of these pieces. There isn't a whole lot that you're going to have to do to the planets. The major detailing that's going to be required is going to be on your astronaut and on your rocket. And as far as what you do to design them is really up to you. The astronaut, different um, different countries are going to have different spacesuits. If you want it to be specific to a country or to a a certain company, you can make sure that it has their emblems on it. If you want it to be kind of generic, there's a lot of just generic uh, astronaut clip art out there that doesn't have a certain you know country flag on it or anything of that nature. And then you just have to kind of make sure you add the little lines to where the places where all the suit is put together. It doesn't take a whole lot, just a couple skinny little black lines. When you're detailing something like this with the black lines, I always recommend diluting your acrylic paint. So when you have your bottle of acrylic paint, you can either dilute the whole bottle by pouring in a portion of a little cup of water. If it is a brand new bottle of paint that's four ounces, I would add a couple, maybe one tablespoon of water, give or take, and then shake it up really, really, really well. If it is a partial bottle of paint, add maybe three drops of water, shake it up and test it. And just kind of see how it's going. A brand new bottle of paint isn't going to be, isn't going to have been exposed to air and evaporated. And so you won't really need to dilute it very much. But if it's a fairly full bottle of paint that has been around the block, that's when that tablespoon might be how much water you need to add. If you add too much water, this is going to be kind of ridiculous. But what I would do if your paint gets too far diluted is un unscrew the cap, leave it open, leave the bottle of paint open for depending on how diluted it is, maybe 10 minutes, maybe half an hour, shake it up, see how it is, leave it open again, you know, and then every 10 minutes, shake it up and just kind of let the water come out of it for a little while. Not that you want to do that. That's sort of a last ditch effort. But if that's what it comes down to, instead of tossing the bottle of paint, that is an option. But in general, add little bits of water at a time so that you don't overdo it. I'm going to be adding a little bit of detail to my rocket ship. I'm going to add a window. This whole thing, I want it to be kind of cartoony and cute. There are certainly ways that you could have done this design to make it look a lot more realistic and a lot less, um, I don't know, cutesy and cutesy. That's the, that's the answer I have for this. Um, you could have done a more realistic looking rocket. There are so many images out there of actual rockets. My husband just requested I do a SpaceX um, Starship, which... Honestly, I don't think I will just because I've just did this one and I don't know. I need a break from the from the rocket category. But, you know, there's there's ones out there. So, I'm going to be applying gel sealer over the background, over the galaxy so it's really shiny. Matte top coat over the astronaut and over the rocket ship and then 3D glaze over my planets. That will make the planets slightly shiny but not nearly as shiny as that background. And this nail is done. It is so cool, you guys. I am absolutely in love with it. It the fact that the rocket, you know, flies around and our little astronaut wiggles and then just the planets and then of course it glows. And sometimes we just can't can't get enough of the glow. I'm feeling glow in the dark lately. So I hope you guys love this one as much as I do. That glow really is impressive. If you want to know the products I used for any of the colors as well as those glow in the dark powders, they are from Double Dip and I will put a link to them in the description box below. Their glow is always impressive and it gives such a nice result. So if you are looking for some glow in the dark acrylics, I recommend them and I will see you guys next time. Bye.